the NK65EE, Novel Keys Entry Edition Keyboard, their introduction to the mechanical keyboard hobby, or curse, however you choose to look at it. Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the NK65EE from Novel Keys. I've been using this board as my daily driver for my boring 9 to 5 since September of last year, so that gives me just over a year of experience with this board as a wait for other group by boards to arrive. Uh, today we're going to take a look at everything that comes in the box with this and some of my thoughts after using it for a year. First, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the features of this board. Uh, so one of the first things is it is a 65% keyboard, so we do retain the arrow keys, which is very useful for me. Um, it's a hot swap, ANSI board, um, sorry, ISO users, um, but hot swap makes it very useful, so no soldering required, so great for entry users. Um, it does have an eight degree typing angle, which is comfortable for me personally. Um, and then if we flip it around back, uh, we see that there is a silicone dampening pad inside to help with acoustics. Um, it does also have per key RGB lighting um, so that we can set that up with VIA, which is very useful as well uh, for you RGB lovers out there. Um, I don't have any shine through keycaps, so it's not that great. It does give a little bit of an underglow um, if you set that up. Um, but I'm not the biggest fan of RGB, so I'm not going to be using that. Um, uh, some of the things that come in the box, it does come with a carrying case, which is useful if you're taking your board on the go uh, to and from the office or whatever the case may be. Um, it does come with a USB-C coiled cable. It's not this one. This one's a very nice custom cable. Um, we'll take a look at the cable here. So let's see. This is the carrying case with the Novel Keys branding on it. Uh, very nice. When we open it up, I have a bunch of stickers in here that I haven't used as of yet, but it's perfectly molded to fit the keyboard inside. Um, it has this compartment up here with a little pocket where I keep the cable uh, that I don't use. Um, and it's USB Type-C to the board and Type-A to uh, your device. Um, it is that rubbery kind of old school cable feel, so I'm not the biggest fan of it. It is coiled though, so if you like that aesthetic and don't want to go for an aftermarket custom coiled cable because they're a little expensive, um, at least you have this right out of the box. Taking a closer look at the board itself, um, I actually really like the Atomic Purple that it comes in. I think it fits the aesthetic of this setup and matches all the Mecha One theme very good. Um, one thing with the polycarbonate case, which is making me wish I went with an aluminum case, is this case seems to be very prone to cracking. I've seen some posts on, uh, on RMK where people's um, NK65 polycarbonate cases have begun cracking and I have evidence of some cracks here on mine as well and up here in the corner as well that's much more visible there there's some dust inside I haven't opened it up and cleaned it in a little bit um, but yeah that's quite unfortunate um, I've actually been very careful with my board um, I work from home this stays on the desk I don't move it around much it hasn't been knocked around at all, so I'm not exactly sure how some of these cracks came to be. So that's one of the biggest cons about this. We've got um, only plate mount stabilizers, no option for screw-in stabilizers. That kind of sucks, um, but I was able to tune the stabilizers decently well, and the polycarbonate case um, cracking. Um, quite easily it seems is my two biggest complaints about this keyboard I do like the build on it it seems uh, or it's not uh, seamless but it does have essentially a screwless design the screws are on the plate 
um, when we remove all the caps that's how we would go ahead and dismantle it um, it doesn't have anything fancy like gasket mounting or anything like that it does have a unique mounting system for this board but it's not very different from a tray mount board um, in typing feel there's really not much flex it's kind of stiff um, so that's something to consider as well To share a few other thoughts that I have with the board after using it for a year, um, I have gone ahead and gone through several different switches with it. Um, I started with Tactile Gang all the way um, with some uh, lubed and filmed Kiwis um, that I really enjoyed, but they were quite clacky um, in this board, um, so I didn't like the sound profile. And when Bespoke Keys was running there, EV01 switches. I went ahead and picked those up um, and they actually look great and fit the color for this board very well. These are round one switches so apparently the color matching is a bit better on their round two but it's fine for me. These are linear switches. They're JWK recolors so they're very smooth. Um, they're lubed and filmed I swapped these out actually before I went to these EV01 switches that we have on the board now. I tried out some Milky Top Gatoron Yellows. Um, and that really opened my eyes to Linear Gang all the way. Um, so I kind of made that transition. Um, once I saw these switches, I picked them up and they're extremely smooth. I really enjoy them. I do go back to Tactile from time to time, um, though I like these a lot. And I've gone ahead and tuned this keyboard to the typing feel that I enjoy the most um, with switches um, and just using it for the past year, I kind of feel familiar with it. I haven't much changed boards, so I actually enjoy the typing feel with it personally. Um, my actual thoughts on this would be if you're diving into the mechanical keyboard hobby head first and you want to go very enthusiast grade and you want to get a, a great typing feel, a great customizability, a great looking board, I wouldn't suggest the NK65. If you or a friend or someone you know wants a decently nice mechanical keyboard, but doesn't want to invest a bunch of time in different switches and different stabilizers, different keycaps, and just wants a relatively cheap mechanical keyboard that they can enjoy for what it is, I would suggest going with the NK65 in that case. Um, because it's a bit limited, customizability is limited, um, it's a single layout, plate mount stabilizers, uh, there's not many mods that you can do, I've got the mods band-aid modded, um, I haven't done any holy mods or anything like that on the stabs. I do like how the stabs sound though. But those are my personal thoughts. If you want to jump into the mechanical keyboard hobby and go with something um, that would allow you a little more in-depth um, entry into it, I would go with something more like the KBD 67 Lite or the Ikea Aurora 68 um, because those are allow more customizabilities on those boards um, but I just wanted to take a look at this just because I've been using it for a year and I had a few thoughts um, I like it a lot I've used it a lot I've become very used to it um, but there are better options and if you're diving in headlong as I said like me and others um, into the mechanical keyboard rabbit hole this might not be the best thing to start with um, if you really want to get your toes wet in customizing uh, mechanical keyboards. Um, this would be more for a casual keyboard enjoyer rather than a hardcore keyboard customizer, I would say. So those are my thoughts and I'll go ahead and leave you with the typing test at the end of this video. Please watch it all the way through and uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.